back to another beautiful, amazing, whatever you want to call it, video. Today, I have a special guest. We have old man brother Gio right here. And today, we'll be doing a little Bible study session. We will be um, diving into John chapter 1 and discussing the whole chapter. Uh, before we start all this, we'll do a quick pray and then we'll dive in. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We glorify you, we exalt you from the depths of our heart. We worship you. Lord, we thank you for your hand, your grace and mercy that has kept us through the night and has enabled us to see another day that you have made. So I pray, Lord God, that we are truly able to rejoice and be glad in this day that you have made. Father God, we are taking advantage of this second opportunity, another chance as you have awakened us to draw closer to you. Father, you said in your word, when two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. So Father, we usher in your presence. We invite you into this study. Show us things, Lord God, that we've never seen before. We ask for revelation, Lord God, by way of your Holy Spirit. We ask for illumination of this scripture, Father God. Even now we ask for you to give us wisdom knowledge and understanding of the things that we read and those things Lord God that we receive Father God let them be downloaded into us Lord God to cause a transformation to cause a change a shift Father God on the inside of us Lord God I pray that they don't leave us Lord God but that those things continuously work on us until we have another time to delve into your word Maybe even now, Lord God, share the things that you've given us as well. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's get right to it. There's 51 verses in this one, so I'm not sure we're going to be able to get through this entire thing. Um, but we'll try to get to a good portion of it. However, yeah. the whole... Yeah. yeah. I mean, we have that thing. That's fine. All right, so let's, let's get right into it. Um, so we get right to it. All right, John chapter one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. And him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. All right, so let's just stop right there because those few verses have a lot in them. Yeah. I was going to ask you, for starters, what, what, what's going on? Just explain to me what you think is happening right now, what, this, what these verses are talking about. But to me, it's, it's kind of talking about like how God is responsible for the creation in this earth and how we should give him honor, in my opinion. I got you. So let's just go to first, verse 1. Yeah. In the beginning was the word. What, what does that mean to you? That the word was created in the beginning. What, what, what word, what's the word? The word is... Not the, not the Bible, because the Bible wasn't written yet. Uh, exactly. I'm glad you said that. So that, that gives you the answer. Think about that. If the Bible wasn't written yet, and this is the beginning, who, who, what is the Bible talking about when it says, in the beginning was the word? Read the next sentence. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Who's the word? God. Here you go. <laughs> that was it. See, like, and, and this, and this is how, is how beautiful the scripture is. Like it, it doesn't leave you guessing, right? It'll, it'll explain to you what you want should you decide to look for it. It's right there, right? Um, I will admit sometimes the thee and thou and thoweth in the King James Version make your head spin. But as, as you read, you know what I mean? You, you just, you'll, you'll start to pick up on it. So simply saying in the beginning, right? So in the beginning, who was there in the beginning? God, because God. beginning means that there had to be some starting point mm -hmm. in order for something to start 
and called at the beginning, time had to be created. So God stands outside of time. Like this is time and God is outside of time. And he's saying, you know what? I'm going to create time. I'm going to call this time, time zero in the beginning. And in the beginning was the word. Jesus is the word. He's the, he's the, he's a, he's a, he's a spirit form of the word. Right. And it says in the beginning was the word, right? And the word was with God. So if the word was with God, that means Jesus was with God, the father, right? And the word was God, meaning that Jesus is God as well. Because some people say, oh, I, you know, Jesus is um, not God. He's just the son of God. No, no. As much as we try to figure that out in our own human brains, all three of the, of the Trinity are, they are God. They're separate entities that make up one. If that may, it's, it's so hard to explain. And us as men, we try to make sense of it. But just understand that the Holy Spirit, the Son, and the Father, they are God. And they are one, right? And so we go on to verse 3. And then it's, this confirms that we said, this confirms what we just said, how the Word is God, right? Yeah. How Jesus is the Word. So it says, look, verse three says, all things were made by him, right? It went from word to him, mm -hmm. right? So now we're referring to him as a pronoun, Jesus. And without Jesus, so replace him with Jesus. Now, all right, matter of fact, go back to one. Replace word with Jesus. But in the beginning was the Jesus. I thought just take yeah, I'm sorry, the word. So say <laughs> take out the N word and replace it with Jesus. Okay, I in the beginning was Jesus and uh, and Jesus was with God and Jesus was God. And keep going now we see him for Jesus. Uh and what verse? Three. Okay. All things are made by Jesus, and without Jesus was not anything made that was made. Keep going. Uh, okay. And Jesus was life, and the life was the light of man. Keep going. All right. And the light um, shineth in the darkness, and the darkness com comprehended it not. Um, there was a man sent from... Well, when I say God, just say Jesus. Or like that. That's it. That's it. So I just wanted to confirm that what I was saying is true. Because what I don't want us to do is think like, oh, because Gio is leading this class or, you know, whatever. We, we, we're studying together, bro. So it's like, I'm looking for stuff. You're looking for stuff. And we want to confirm. I just don't want to, like, say, all right, this is what I think. And then we go off of that. Now, we need the Bible to confirm what we're talking about. So that's, that's simply what I wanted to do right, right, right there. And that's, what, that's how we're going to get through this study. We're going to make sure that what we're saying is fact, not just how we're feeling or what we think or an opinion. This is what the Bible is saying, right? Um, so Jesus is the light, right? And that light is inside of men. Um, it's, it's, it's just really quick. I don't know if it's even possible. But can you get your house pitch black where there's no light in it at all? Yeah. Right. But the moment, the moment a pinch of light is able to make it through, it shines all the way through and the dark can't stop it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, because it's like that. Because, like, right when you come up the stairs, it got a light right above there. And usually every other light would be shut off, but then it shines towards my room, then in the kitchen, and then, like, with the living room, because they're literally right next to each other. It just my shines. Point. My point exactly. So you could be in a completely light room is lit with a whole bunch of light, and the dark can't overpower it. But you could be in a room that's completely dark and just get like a, a the size of a pencil, number two pencil point of light, and it will peer straight through the darkness. And that's exactly what verse five is saying. Verse four and five, that, that that same strength, that same light of Jesus lives in us. All right. 
And, 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 and so that goes, I mean, we'll, we'll go deeper into that, but if we're supposed to be the light of Jesus, when we enter into a room, a classroom, um, a Zoom room, um, when we're outside, when we're amongst our peers, when we're in our houses or our homes with our families, we're supposed to be the light shining into the darkness. The light. The light. Yeah, that's right. The light. <laughs> right? That that light that, that Jesus is putting us is supposed to shine into the darkness. So we're not supposed to be like participating with the darkness and doing it's those things in the dark. We're supposed to shine out. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know what scripture it is, but it's some scripture that says, let your light so shine before man so they shall see or may see your good works. I don't remember what exact scripture that is. That's it. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, sir. Like, like I take, for example, a party. Anybody party with the lights on? No. Exactly. There's a lot of darkness going on because you're in there doing stuff you ain't supposed to be doing. But the light is on, everybody going free. As the light turns on, everybody... <sighs> <laughs> it's like you know I mean? everybody stopped dancing the music shut up and, and that's just a, an example of darkness things that happen in the dark versus things that happen in the light right so this light is inside of us right should we accept jesus as our lord and savior and so now we go on to verse six so now it transitions it talks about the the um, the spiritual aspect of jesus and where the word came from and talks about the light and how everything was made through Jesus. Everything, everything that exists was made through Jesus. And so now we go to verse six. Now we get into a story part. Go ahead. Okay. There was a man son from God whose name was John. The same came from, a uh, thing came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, he was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. I wrote this. Okay. All right. So now, who did we just learn about? Uh, John. Man named John. Where did John come from? He, it's out from what the scripture says. It's not like you guys sent some other. God. So, God sent John. Right, we'll find out specifically where John came from, but as far as we're concerned, right now, God sent John. And John says the same, meaning John. John came as a witness, as John came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Um when I say witness is like he's he's sharing um his testimony. He's he's like like Jehovah Witness, like they go out and they and they go out and they um they knock on people's doors and they go to witness to you, aka um ex explain the word of God or try to share the word of God, right? And that's what John was sent to do, um, to be a witness of of who? Verse seven. What does it say? It says to bear a witness of the light. Who's the light? God. Jesus, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, Jesus. Yeah. That's probably the same thing. I just want to make sure you know specifically you know what you're saying. So then that all men through him might believe. So what was the purpose? What was John's purpose? His purpose was to deliver the message so that people would be able to know and uh, put himself, try to connect with with God. So he says, he says he, God sent John to share the word about the light so that people would believe in the light. It says specifically that John was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Okay? So that was John's purpose. And better believe, just as John was sent to earth by God, or was brought to earth by God for a purpose, as Ron, G-O. Everybody was sent for a purpose. Everybody with purpose as well, right? Um, and that purpose may change from season to season. It may not just be one thing. Right. So, for example, like, it's not by chance that I met you. Right. And we met each other. And and I know you don't remember, but I'm trying to tell you when we met, you was the quietest person in the group. But you talk so much now that you probably don't remember yeah. that. <laughs> looking back, looking back I, I, I had to think about that. I was like, you know what you were Because when I first came to Multi Street, I did not talk to people like that. No, I remember because when we always in the, I remember the first group when I first met you, we was in the, um, the 
fellowship hall. We was in a circle and we was all introducing each other. And um, I remember like you whisper your name and then after that you kind of get quiet for the rest of the time and it was just like and then now look at you now you're doing videos and everything definitely not no quiet person no. <laughs> you phone with two for four hours if you want to I mean now you just don't stop talking so <laughs> no, that's, no lie like I was like from I'll say from like my second year fourth grade and like fifth grade I was really quiet like you met me when I was in fifth grade I was really quiet I didn't talk to people like that cause just I don't know why, but I wasn't a talkative person like like that. Like well, in public places, but outside of public places, I was very talkative. But in public places, I was not talkative. Okay, okay. Well, I don't grow out of that, but I did. I don't mm-hmm. know. Bro, now, 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 you're not just talking to talk. Now you're talking with purpose. Now you're talking to share the word. So we thank God for that, and I, and I pray that you continue in this direction that you don't lose your focus, right? Um, So now we go on, verse nine. It says, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that comes into the world. Talking about Jesus, right? And it says, verse 10, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. So I'm gonna replace he with Jesus and him with Jesus. Jesus was in the world and the world was made by Jesus and the world knew Jesus, did not know Jesus. He came, or Jesus came unto his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received Jesus, to them gave Jesus power to become, to to them, Jesus gave them power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So God, so Jesus is giving us the opportunity to be entered into his family. And how do we do this? By simply accepting him as our Lord and Savior. We have to believe in him. But it says not everybody believed him, right? And that's unfortunate because... I know I was in a study with Jave the other day and I was just telling him, I was like, yo, it, it breaks my heart that not everybody is going to receive this gospel. And and it's going to be like, they're not going to realize it until it's too late. You know what I mean? And that's why God said, after he sent the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, which we'll get to, the job was to go out and share the word, make disciples what's a disciple a student someone who's constantly seeking and studying after god right so that's the job so nowadays it's 2020 social media bro makes it almost so much easier like you could talk to somebody in china right now if you wanted to yeah that's exactly why i do it because i knew i knew from a young age one i had i had what i had some purpose and I knew I was going to have some talent. And I always knew that I was going to have to use that talent to um, draw more people in. So, you know, when I started doing my whole speaking and stuff, but I didn't even start off preaching. A lot of people did, a lot of people don't know this. I did not start off preaching. I started off doing motivational speaking, but it led into preaching. And so when it, when it led into preaching, I was like, you know what? I got, I got, I got all this fan base. I can reach so much people through social media. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just go for it. That's it, bro. That's it. That's it. So <clears throat> um, so God God says he will give you power. Verse 12. Very important. Mm-hmm. Why does God need to give you power to become a son of God? Why can't we just wake up and say, you know what? I'm a son of God. That's it. And just like and just whatever. Like, why do we need power to do that? So we need power to do that because being the son of God, child of God, you're gonna there's always temptation, there's always there's always um some is always gonna happen. So you're gonna you're gonna basically something's always gonna happen. So you're gonna need that power to be able to fight off the enemy. And if yeah. you don't have that power, you can't you can't fight off the enemy. And it's not necessarily always just the enemy. Sometimes the the enemy is your inner me. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you're dealing with your own stuff, right? So 
That's why God has to give us power, but we have to tap into that power. You do. I mean, it's like, man, you got a cold beverage in the fridge and you're saying you're thirsty. You got to get to the fridge. You got to open up the door. And you got to get the water and then you got to open the water and then you got to drink the water. Like there's a process. You got it's a step by step process. You got to keep seeking. No, nah, that'd be me sometimes. I'd be like, nah, I gotta go. I gotta really gotta open the way to the fridge, to the kitchen. Then I gotta turn the top, then I gotta pour it, then I gotta put the top back on, then I gotta open the fridge door again, then I gotta put it back in the fridge, then I gotta pick up my um, glass of water, then I gotta walk over the. Sometimes I just be making all of that up in my mind just to not do something. And that's, and that's exactly the reason why some of us as Christians, um, or even those who aren't like, those are the reasons why we don't we don't really get to experience the fullness of God. Like, there's so much He has in store for us, but we we get in our own way by by our logic, like thinking that those things don't make sense. There's no way this is God who can part seas and and raise people from the dead. And but the moment one of their friends gets shot or a family member gets shot, and the doctor is like, yo, you're not gonna make it. And then all of a sudden, the the the, the doctors are like, oh my gosh, it's a miracle. The the person is alive and, or you know, a family member is sick and, you know, they just have a full recovery. And then they're just like, like they, they don't realize that that's God. And, and it's in those moments that I believe that God uses his power to draw us but I don't think we pay attention to it because we get so caught up in our own world. True. And usually in those situations, guess what? Usually, let's say about like 90% of the time, they'll start praying. And that's thank you, God. Thank you, God. You know what I mean? But then that's not enough, right? So, yeah, you got introduced to, introduced to this great man and what he can do. But God wants you to dig deeper. He wants more than just... Uh, a prayer of thanks because he did something for you. He wants more than just a prayer when you're going through something. God wants to be in a relationship with you. Like he wants to hang out with you. Like he wants to come with you to, to school. He wants to come with you on your Zoom meeting. He wants to come with you when you're on the basketball court or hanging out with your friends at the movies. Like, like God wants to be your friend, like your best friend. The question is, do you want to accept him as your best friend? All right. So, um, verse 14 says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. The scripture is simply saying, it says, and, the, and Jesus was made flesh. So we have a spiritual being now in the form of a human being. And he dwelt among us. He came into the world, right? And we, we got to see his glory. It's full of grace and full of truth, right? God, I mean, I, sometimes I sit and think, I'm like, man, I wish that I was there. I wish I was there, you know what I mean? Jesus, but, I mean he would have he been irritated by me because I would have asked so much questions. But no, you know, you know what though? Because then I also think about that. He came into the world because they didn't know him, and not everybody received him. So the question is, would you have received him as wrong? And you have no idea. You can't answer that question. You can't because you don't know. Like some strange dude walk up to you talking about, "I am the Messiah." Or matter of fact, I don't even think he said he was the Messiah. Not once. It was by. No, he didn't. Everybody else was saying he was a messiah. Because remember, I don't remember exactly what some people were saying he was a messiah. And then others was like, no, the messiah is this person. But Jesus never said it himself. He never said it himself. He asked his disciples, I believe it was Peter. I think he said, I think he asked Peter, he's like, who do you say I am? Um, who do, he said, I think he said, who do people say I am? Oh, they think you're a prophet. They think you're Elijah. They think you're something. They think you're this. And and then Peter, and then he, and then Jesus went to ask Peter, he's like, who do you say I am? I know what the people say I am, but who do you say I am? Oh, you're the Christ. 
the only begotten of the Father. You are Jesus. Like you are the Messiah, right? So they they knew who he was, but the people just didn't receive him. So and so now I ask myself, I'm like, would I have received Jesus? You know, I don't know. It all depends on what type of state of mind I was in, like what was happening. Like it's just some strange dude walked up to me and he's just walking around and he's just he got this 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 crowd of people behind him. And I'm like, I know me, I don't follow crowds. I go the opposite direction. So Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So exactly. just be I just be in my own mind. Man. So you know, I thank God for the Holy Spirit because now that Jesus has ascended up to heaven after he had his time on earth, he sent his Holy Spirit to go after people. So I thank God for that. Um and so now verse 15 it says, John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, grace and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests. Okay, we'll stop right there because they're going to transition to a different thought. So verses 15 through 18. I got a question real quick. Um, when it says that um, Jesus was in the bosom of God, what exactly did that mean? Uh, so this is your bosom, right? Right here in your chest. Um, Can you go up to your dad right now and hug him? You asking me or you telling me? I'm asking you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? And, and why is that? Because he's alive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can any man just walk up to your dad and hug him? No. So why can't you? Because that's my dad. Right. That's your, you're his son. That's your dad. Right? And he loves you. Yeah, that's it. So Jesus and the Father are like this. So he's near to his heart. Oh, okay. It talks about the bosom, right? Um, so that's what he said. But so it says, John, verse fifteen. John bear witness of him, as we said. John was coming to share the word, um, and he's like, "Oh, this is the one I was speaking about. This is the one that I." So he says he comes after me. So John was on the earth before Jesus was. We'll, we'll find out how John and Jesus are cousins. Um, and I didn't know that. I did not know that. And John is born six months before Jesus, right? Um, well, born Jesus was born. Well, I got it. It was born from Mother Mary. That's what we leave it at. So, like, so it says he was he was he come after me, meaning Jesus was on earth after me, but people bef- prefer him before me because he was before me. Like, so he's saying, although he's in a human form now, he's still God, right? He came before me. And it says, um, it says verse 17, the law was given by Moses. What law? What law do you think he's talking about Moses? What do you think, what do you think about? The message that, that God sent him with, or? It was what? What do we call it? comes on two tablets testimony prophecy prophet uh... and commandments that's oh. the that's the law he's talking about tablets. no we said tablets i was i was about to say technology where i realized it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's two two they call it a tablet but it's like pretty much it's two stones that god used his finger Edge in the stone, the uh, Ten Commandments. So he's saying um, the law was given by Moses, right? Moses gave the people the Ten Commandments, which came from God. It says, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That's huge. That's so huge. But that is the only reason why you and I are able to sit here and talk about God. You and I are able to get walk this walk of faith. So when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, 
It was simply because he knew that these people were out of line. They just, they just would not get it. God wanted a relationship. Like you ever seen this girl, bro? And it's like, like you, you, oh, I, I want. Like you're like, right I'm sorry, I know exactly what you're talking. About. You, you feel me? And it's like you, you, like you, you would chase her a hundred blocks without stopping it. Like you just, you would do any and everything and go after her. And you are, you actually doing every, like, yo, how you doing? How you get your number? Can I help you with your homework? You find yourself doing the stupid stuff to get to know her. And bro, that's what God was doing with the people of Israel. When he took them out of Egypt and led them to the promised land, Canaan, through Moses. They just wasn't getting it. They 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 just wanted God for his stuff and not for his heart, not for that relationship. So it's like, okay, now this girl accepts you. Like, yeah, you know what, whatever. I found out he got money, so I'm just going, I'm going to say, yeah, let's talk. But he's not really my boyfriend, but I'm going to get stuff out of him. I'm going to ask him for money, ask him to take me places, send me an Uber. And that's, and that's what they were doing. I ain't asking for that. I ain't sending no Uber, no Uber. <laughs> You feel me? So and that that's nobody, what I ain't nobody's sugar daddy. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and that's how they were treating God. Like they only wanted to cry out to God when they were in trouble. Only when they needed things. They and were God, high and cold. That's it. That's it, bro. It was just like, you know what I mean? And and that's not what God wants. You know, He wants a sincere relationship with us. So it says grace and truth. Grace is huge, bro. Grace is so huge. Like one example, like Grace is, yeah, I um, I made a mistake, but I know the love that God has for me, and so I know that I can come to Him, even though I don't feel like I want to because I feel so ashamed and beat down. Mm -hmm. I can come to Him because I know He has given me grace. Grace allows you to come inside, to the inner depths, into God's bosom as Jesus does and ask God for forgiveness, but it has to be from truly from your heart. And then God will give you that power as it spoke about in verse 12 to turn away from those things. And that's what repentance is. Repentance is not just saying, I'm sorry. Repentance is turning around and away from those things. And God is the one who helps us to repent. If the GPS says go North three blocks North, and you're traveling south, here's how you repent. You stop immediately. About face and head north. Don't even look in your rearview mirror to find out what's happening heading south. Don't. Just keep looking north. That's repentance. And a lot of times people get that mixed up. Repentance is just saying sorry. So much bigger than sorry. So much bigger. It's actually stop doing that thing. Turn from it and don't go back to it. Which is hard. It sounds whole lot. It's easy to say, <laughs> but it's hard. Oh, yeah. But we thank God for grace because when these guys were doing the things they were doing earlier in the, in, the, in the Bible, God was God was just 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 tearing them up, giving them beatings, boy. As you as y'all would say, share licks. Like he, <laughs> he was out here get, getting it. I did not. You know, talking to every syllable. Didn't I tell you not to like? That's what God was doing, you know what I mean? So we thank God for Jesus, right? They wasn't getting the message. Exactly. So that's what he was saying. Um, and so now we go to 19. Now we talk about, now we're talking about the ministry of John and what was John doing on earth. So verse 19 says, and this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? John confessed and denied and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Clear as day, right? And he says, and then they asked him, what then? Are you Elias? Meaning, um, I think Elias is uh, Elijah. Are you, are you, Eli is it Elijah or is it Isaiah? So I think Elias is Elijah. Um, and it says, so they asked him, are, like, are you that prophet? And he says, I am not. He says, are you, are you that prophet? And he answered, no. Verse 22 is, and then they said unto him, who are you? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? 
pretty much saying, yo, yo, bro, listen, the president sent us to find out who you are because you, you, you know, your buzz on social media is lit. You got mad followers. You got over 1.5 billion followers. You're trying to find out, and you making all this noise. So the president sent us to find out what you talk about, who you are. Um, and verse 23 says, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. So I think that's Isaiah. All right. So this is who he's saying he is. He's the one crying out to everybody in the middle of the wilderness saying, make straight the way of the Lord. I'm preparing the way for the Lord to come, for people to accept him. And verse 24 says, and they which were sent were of the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Pharisees were like, I'll keep it simple. They like the government back then. All right. Um, they had, they like the one who had the power. So verse 25 and says, they asked him and said unto him, why do you baptize then? If thou be, if you are not Christ, nor Elijah, Neither that prophet said, like, yo, why are you baptizing people if you're not Christ or a prophet? Like, who are you, bro? Like, you John the Baptist. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> his job is literally in his name. He that's it. That's it, right? Um, that's good. That's good. That's a word, brother. Your job is in your name. What does God call you? Mm -hmm. That's a good word right there. I like that. I like that. No, I just said that out of nowhere. But you might have to unravel that one. Your job is in your name. That's gold. That's real gold. The world call you Ezron, but what does God call you? Come on. Ooh, nah, let me chill. Let me chill. <laughs> All right. So, um, verse twenty six. John answered them, saying, "I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you who you know not. Who's he talking about?" Any idea? Uh, who you know? Oh, Jesus. Yep. Who you know not? Yep, because if you look at verse 10, it says, He was in the world, but the world and the world was made by him, but they did not know him. Verse 27 says, He it is who coming, who's coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. He's talking about how great God is, like he can't even touch his feet. Like, that's how great God is. That's how he, great he sees God. Watch. I'm going to use that excuse. Watch. I'm going to use that excuse one day. <laughs> so, so it says, verse 28, these things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Why do we call him the Lamb of God? Lamb of God. So this this one is a little bit. You gotta know your history to know this one. Okay. Just to I'm a, okay, I'm gonna just infer. So like, so like, God is the sheep, right? And I'm just I'm just infer. God is like the sheep, right? And the 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 uh, what's it called? The fur in the sheep kind of like covers the sheep, and it's a part of the sheep. And like without it, it's like. It, it, it's a bull sheep, and it's just like make no sense. So, it, so like, like, like Jesus is that is that hair on the sheep, and oh, to each other. And, and, without, and look, no, no, without each other, it would make no sense. I got you. Um, yeah, not quite, but hold I, on. I know that's not it, but I was just trying. To, that's how it just. That's how I was thinking. I was like. I was like, you know what? Let me just let me just say something. It, it may not be right, but <laughs> no, I got you. So the lamb, right? So just really quick, back in the olden days, like like Moses, like after the Ten Commandments, right? Mm -hmm. God had them killing animals, sacrificing animals. What was the purpose of sacrificing? The purpose of sacrificing is because in the beginning, God said to Adam, when you sin. I'm going to answer that because I know the reason why. When you do something that you, and I told you not to do, which is sin, mm -hmm. you shall surely die. But we see that Adam did not die in the physical. 
he was still alive. He had a wife, they had kids, they had a family. He died in the spiritual. God's spirit had to depart from him. Sin and God cannot do this. Never. There's it's kind of like, it's kind of like oil and water. Yep, exactly like that, right? So sin and God cannot do this. So whenever sin happens, whenever someone commits sin, guess what has to happen? Somebody has to die. So some blood has to be shed. And so God loved us so much that he tolerated us, us in our sin that instead of us dying, we killed animals. That was the blood that was shed. So in the place of our blood being shed, animals had to shed their blood. So we had to go kill them. So we killed, so we killed goats, we killed rams, we killed sheep, we killed lambs, we killed turtle doves, we killed pigeons. They, there's, a, there's a whole different, there's so many different uh, animals and they, they all have a specific reason why they're sacrificed. Um, we'll go back. That's the history. We'll go back. So now fast forward to present day with the saying lamb of God. The ultimate sacrifice, right? So th these people had to kill these animals every time they sin. Like every time they wanted to, so they, they had, they built a tabernacle during, during Moses time. The tabernacle was considered the church. Yeah. Every time they had to come into the church, guess what they had to do? Sacrifice yeah. man. Had a kid because they just their sins were just filthy. They couldn't just walk into church like we do now because of God's grace. Right. So like they would sacrifice for each sin, or like let's say like you know, there's a few days I'll probably commit like let's say about like ten sins, and then I'll go and sacrifice. Yeah, like let's say yesterday you killed you you did something like ten bad things. The next day when it's time to go into the tabernacle, you need to do a sin offering. And you need to go kill something, right? You need to sacrifice an animal, right? But it, it, it is the greatness of God. This is how much God really loves us. This is how type of, like, remember I told you, like, you do that stupid, all a bunch of stupid stuff to try to get that girl to show you how much you like her and how much you love her? This is God. This is God showing us how much he loves us. He sent his son as the lamb. He died for us. He was the ultimate sacrifice that we no longer had to kill these animals in the, in the place of our sin. God sent his son so that he could die in our place. And instead of having to kill animals now, guess what? Now we had to accept that ultimate sacrifice into our lives. We had to say, okay, Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my God. I accept you. I receive you. I believe in you. It says, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The sin you create, the sin you may have committed yesterday, Ezron, the sin you may commit today, that, that's what the, the ultimate sacrifice. The Lamb of God. That's why we call him the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. Yeah, now that makes sense, because I knew, I knew about that. I knew about that, but I just didn't know that the name and that story had a connection. I didn't know that. So one thing I meant to tell you, I forgot to tell you, but um, as we go through this book, I want you to take a note of, like if you get pen and paper, I want you to take a note of everything new that you learn about Jesus. Okay? So the next time, if you don't have a pen and paper next to you, I want you to write down the things that you learned about Jesus. Okay, great. So far, we just learned that he was the word. We don't hold, on, hold on, hold on. Cause I have this whole bookshelf full of books that I don't touch. <laughs> See, this is a book that I write all my video ideas in. Like this, this, this <laughs> little of pages of like ideas. And those uh, yeah, so I'm trying to free page. On top, of that, on top of that clean page, I just want you to write Jesus, right? Real big letters, and then we're gonna list out everything that you wrote that you learned about Jesus. Okay. So the first thing is going to be the word, right? God, Jesus is the word. One. Look. Look at Jesus. Look, I got Jesus in my hand. Look at Jesus. You see him? Imagine if you said it to somebody. They were like, wait, why you got Jesus in your hand? I'm not going to understand, you see? This is, this is Jesus, right? <laughs> I'll be like, just read. 
John chapter one, but fully understand it. Don't read it just to read it. You got to fully understand it. Because I, I, I read my little bit piece of it last night, and I kind of was like just speculating and saying so. Don't worry. So, so you're going to talk about, so the first thing you're going to put is the word. Jesus, you're going to put the word. You're going to put, um, if you want, um, you can put that he made everything in the earth. Um, he's a light, the light. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. He's a light. Okay, he's a light. And we just learned in verse 29 that He's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Verse 34, and we'll stop there and we'll pick up again next week. One of the reasons why I want you to write about, some of the reasons why I want you to write down notes that you learn about Jesus is, first of all, you should learn every day about your God, the person who you call your Lord, right? And then the other thing is, I don't know if you remember, but there was times when, you know, I would ask us to pray, like when we went out to play ball or when we were um, in a meeting or whatever in church, I would say, can you pray to God without asking him for anything? What would you say to God if you did not, if you were told you can't ask for anything? You'd be like, uh, okay, then I'll probably start thanking him. Okay, cool. Take away thanking him. If you don't, you can't thank him and you can't ask him for anything. Well, you just praise him. Praise, right? And how can you praise him? You are the word. You are the light. You created all things that are in the earth and everything that was created in the earth was by you, right? You came into the world for me. You, you are the Lamb of God, the one who takes away all the sin of all the world. Thank, like, you know, and then this is the praise. You gave us grace. You know, this is how you praise God. The more you learn about him and the more, and as you learn these things, you just like, like, God, I, and then you, 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 don't, you don't even find the need to ask for anything. You just, God, I don't want anything. Only thing I want is to be with you, to be in your presence, to give me you. And then everything else will just fall in line. And all I want is you. And then I'm not worried about the things, the things you would iron out, you would take care of. I just, just give me you. And this is what I want you to get out of this study, bro. I want you to understand on a more deeper level who your God is to you. Okay. Are we what race we on right now? Thirty. Okay. All right, we stop at thirty-four. Okay. All right. So let's get to this. Uh, this is he of whom I said, "After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me." So John is being very specific to tell people that he's not the Christ. He's not the one. Listen, don't. I'm just a man. He's remaining humble. You know, sometimes p- preachers or pastors or ministers, like sometimes they they think that that's their church. That's not your church. <laughs> First of all, like God put you there to hold it down, to take care of it. You know what I mean? To be a shepherd over some people. But that's not your, like, John. You're the manager, not the boss. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. I need you to manage these things while you're here on earth. And I'm don't forget I'm the boss. Any decisions you need to make, come see me before you go and make them. So John's being humble. He's remaining in his lowly state, staying low. Verse 31, it says, And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I come baptizing with water. Bro, I don't know if you just picked that up. But I'm gonna read 30 and 31 together. This is he who of this is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, 
for he was before me. So he's pretty much saying, I was here on earth. There's a man coming after me who people would want to see him way much more than they would even think about me. And says, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest, meaning he will show himself to Israel, which is the reason why I've come to baptize people with water. Bro, Sean is doing a job for God, baptizing people, and he has no idea who Jesus is. He has no idea what he looks like. Can you imagine? He just he just told that he will baptize Jesus. So he just he just baptizing people left and right, sharing the word left and right. But he has no idea who the Messiah is, what he looks like. That type of trust and faith is the stuff that we trust. Like if God say, yo, Ezra, I need you to get on a plane right now and fly to Djibouti in Africa. And you're like, what, God? What's Djibouti? I didn't know it was a real place. Anyway, <laughs> I will. I will first. I would be like, I'll face him just to make sure, and I'll be like, um, hey, first of all, how you even spell, how you even spell Djibouti? Like, <laughs> where am I getting the money from? Like, like, I mean, I will obviously, I will personally ask those questions because I don't have no money for no plane ticket. And yo, the, and this is so. This is another thing that we can uh, praise God for. You know how they say He's the beginning and the end, Alpha. And Omega. Omega. Right, so Alpha and Omega, those are Greek letters. Remember how I told you New Testament was written in Greek, right? Yeah. So those are Greek letters. Alpha is is equivalent to our A. Omega is equivalent to our um, Z. So I'm the beginning and the end. So the way God works is. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So. I'm telling you, bro, you dig deeper into the word, like, you just be finding out math so that you don't know. Like, you know, and, and, and people, everything you need is in this book, bro. I'm telling you, like, like love, a love and hip hop episode is in this book. Yes. No, yes. My um, passion is going on. Wait, wait, what chapter was that we read at your house where that, where that whole chapter was a love and hip hop episode? I remember that whole <laughs> It was <laughs> like, that dude, that dude, he was, he, oh, I don't remember his name, but he, he had a wife and then he had maids and he slept with the wife and also slept with the maids and then had like probably like 11 kids and those kids turned out, or 12. Oh yeah, I forgot. 12 and those kids turned out to be the tribe of Israel, but you know, girls wasn't, they wasn't counted, they wasn't like counted as equal as boy back then. So that's why the girl never got counted as a another tribe. So it was 11 tribe. That was a whole other hip hop episode. And that's what I mean. Like, like, so he got, he got, he got one wife who has a, a maid servant. He has another wife. She has a maid servant. And he just out here having kids by all four of them. And 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 those type of like I guess that's, that's the beauty of God, how he just uses our mistakes. And he he A still loves us in our mistake. And he B, he gets to use the mistake and make something of it. Like God is so amazing. And I don't want us to like. I don't want to. Don't get me twisted. He doesn't want us to live in those mistakes. And don't yeah. don't don't just go start making mistakes. And yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, you want us to live. It's gonna happen because of God let it happen. But other stuff is just don't try to purposely make a mistake and be like, you know what? I'm God, you. Yeah, he like he's gonna do something for me. Like he's gonna do something for me. I ain't worry about that. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, that like that that was um Jacob actually. Right. So we talk, and that's how you get the 12 tribes of Israel. It came out of that, that instance. That was in Genesis. And so, um, so, so, so get back to the Alpha and Omega beginning and the end, right? So the way God works is he works the end from the beginning. Let me explain. God created the earth. He created the moon, the sun, the stars. He then goes on to create the sea, the land, the animals. What was the last thing he created before he rests on the sixth day, on the seventh day? Man. Man. So he created the environment and the atmosphere, and then he put man in it. 
he he didn't create man first in the beginning and then create the earth because the man going to be sitting there. Where are you going to put him? You see what I'm saying? He's just going to be hanging out. <laughs> Whatever. Like, so he creates the end from the beginning and then he puts, you know what I mean? So it's just like the end would be man. The end of creation would be man. And he, he started that in the beginning. So it's just like, God works the end from the beginning. So what I'm trying to say is your purpose that God has for you is just sitting there waiting. And this is Ezra. You're working, you're, you're working towards your purpose. And this is what John was doing. John was out here just fulfilling the purpose, the reason why God sent him. And he had no idea that he was going to be the one to baptize Jesus. He had no idea what Jesus looked like. He just, he didn't know. But every Sunday he's out here giving his sermon, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord. Repent. I, imagine going to church every day, every Sunday. And that's the message you hear. <laughs> repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. It's like, what? Oh, I was. Uh... <laughs> and, 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 and you see, that's so crazy because. <laughs> People even tune out now, and the word ain't the same. Every Sunday, it's a different word. People are still tuning out. So I can imagine how many people would have tuned out. But some people received him. Some people received him. And so um, we'll just wrap up really quick. So it says he came baptizing with water, right? What's your understanding of – hold on. Let's keep reading, and we go back to baptism. So it says 31, and I knew him not, but that he should, make, that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I come baptizing with water. So God was coming so that he can redeem his people from Israel. They, they still wasn't getting it. Like all the things that he put them through, slavery, um, putting them in the promised land. Like they just, they just not getting it. So Jesus had, Jesus had to come down himself for them to try to get it. Verse 32 says, John bear record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. So verses 31 through 32. Oh, let's keep going, matter of fact. It says, and I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. So what verses 30 through 34 is saying, no, th 29 through 34 is saying, all right, so John is having church, whatever, you know, he's baptizing people in the, you know, in the river, boom, 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 baptizing them, right? Baptizing them. And then he just sees this man and it's like, okay, something, something's different happening, but he doesn't know who this man is. When he baptized him, something, something different happened from when he baptized other people. Verse 32, it says, when he baptized him with water, it says, he saw the spirit of God descending from heaven like a dove. Imagine this big, big angels, big birds just coming down and resting upon God. And it was in that moment, he knew that that was Jesus, that that was the Messiah. And it was in that moment that he realized he fulfilled his purpose. It was in that moment he realized that all the hard work he was doing, all the criticism that he would have to face against the Pharisees, all the, 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 the people who were the naysayers, he realized it was in that moment why I did what I did, why I stuck in there, why I made this happen. It's because of... I had to baptize Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he says, I baptize people with water, but Jesus is going to baptize people with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Right. We're going to come back because that's, that's huge. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is huge. That's a whole other study. But that, but mm -hmm. John saw the reason for his purpose. It finally came, it, it, the two came together. And that's, and that's how we'll wrap up. So, any questions, comments? What are you thinking? This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. That's 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 my thought. This is crazy. <laughs> but I don't got I don't got I don't have any I don't have any question. Just, so what, what's your oh you could also put that um you you learned that Jesus was baptized by John. John. <clears throat> 
Wait, this was, wait, this was already when he came, right? Like, to him, like, being born out of Mary and all that. Yeah, but, like, yeah. So he's okay. already in, in, in human form. I mean, he's already in adult form. He's an adult now. But, um, yeah, this is after that. Yeah. So, if you want, um, you want to pray this out? Yeah. You pray this out, I'll pray this out. That works. Right. Father God, you're holy, you're worthy, you're mighty God. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who's our provider, God. You know the beginning from the end, the end from the beginning, God. We pray as we just dwell in your scripture, God, that we learn some new stuff and we'll be able to apply it to our life, God. We pray that this video will be able to be used to um, preach to people, to be able to give a message to people, to be able to let them learn something and try to persuade them to deep deep into the word because the word because when you deep into the word you learn a lot of new stuff with god there's so much to learn there's so much to discover in the word that we need to know god and we pray that we're gonna continue to dig deep in your word we pray to continue to take notes continue to learn stuff continue to use this video as a message to the people to be able to persuade the people and be able to give them a good message god we praise you god and we love you god and we pray that next when we come back we'll do the same god we pray that we'll be able to be able to preach to the people and really give them a good message and really understand these scriptures to the fullest god we pray that we'll be able to apply these scriptures some way somehow in our life god jesus name bless the name amen Oh, my brother, appreciate you. You too. All right, do your thing, man. We're going to talk. All right? Yeah. All right, bro. All right, guys, that's it for the video, guys. Please like, subscribe, make sure you share this video because this was a very important session. We'll be back next week with more of, with the rest of um John Chapter 1. That's it for the video. Please like, subscribe, peace.